So there was debate at the time if this is a small, beautiful musical that should be in a little piazza somewhere, like maybe Union Square or something. <laughs> That's our piazza. Well, he did talk about wanting to make a record. You see, it was really clear in Broadway rehearsals right away. I mean, I could see him in the morning across the room at the piano. I mean, it was like someone really important to me was in the room. And not everyone, I would think, in the room, the other Broadway performers completely understood my fascination, or I was a, a real fan. Um, and so that started, that connection started across the room from day one. I loved what he was playing. I could hear him fiddling, doodling, uh, imagining. He wrote a lot of new material for me during the, during the run. Um, so uh, that, that conversation, I don't even remember the day it happened. There wasn't like a day he says, maybe say we're going to make a record. But he did say uh, that we would work, that we would maybe make an, an album at some point. Uh, what happened was about a year went by, I did another Broadway show right away, and Finian's Rainbow as well as Dracula on Broadway. And um, I think I did some cabarets. So one year went by, and uh, Michelle and I stayed in touch, and, uh, and in those phone conversations, there was that feeling of, we will get, I will see you in New York, and we will talk about it in a recording. Again, there was no commitment. He did show up in my apartment, and we did have a week, and he, it really wasn't even planned to be a week. I, I could just sense he was willing. I opened my door, he was there, and we worked. It was serious. We really were working on his music, and I knew he was coming, and I, I had high hopes, so I prepared a binder of everything he ever wrote, and I did my honor to him to, to, to be prepared for whatever could maybe happen, and we got, I got way more fortunate than I expected. Phil Ramon ent entered the picture on about the fifth day that Michelle was in my apartment. Uh, Michelle, you see, Michelle doesn't live in the same world as, as anyone, really. He uh, just, he's so free. He just, we, we were working, he had an idea, he got excited, he thought we got something now. He had a fantasy himself, and I was loving some of the music, and we were loving working together. Well, he's wonderful uh, to be around as, when he's creative and he's excited. So he just got on his cell phone, Phil, Phil, it is, a, it is, a, it is Michelle, Michelle, oh, oh, how are you, oh, darling? I haven't spoken to you for so long. I mean, literally just like they have, I'm, who knows the last time they spoke. Uh, Phil, I want you to come tomorrow. Like he, that's how he is. Now, can you come now to Mi uh, Melissa's house? Melissa Erico, this singer, you know, I love her. She's from the Broadway, but, but so now, now, Phil, please. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm sure Phil said like, I don't even live nearby. I mean, we live in upstate. Whatever it was, he was next day. Phil was in my apartment. They love each other. They've obviously had great success with the Yentl and so much, so much of their career is shared. Um, and Phil was willing to hear what he had to say and, and to be there. And he showed up relaxed and, and open and sweet. My life now with three kids, I am a mad housewife in a lot of ways. I have so many things I would love to do. Uh, the kids ha absolutely come first. Their spirit comes first. If I can be sure that I have them going and I've been with them non-stop for a long time, I can peel away. I say I do a lot of things now in the margin. Well, you have to figure Patrick and I became parents in two and a half years to three people. So we are still in such an incredible state of gratitude and we're so overwhelmed. We look at each other almost every day and we just, wow. And we, we actually look at the kids when they fall asleep and we just look at their bodies and just they're beautiful. So we're, we're, the house is a pretty happy place. We are so grateful and excited to be parents. There's that mommy also used to be a singer and loves singing. And I've, I have cautiously recommitted myself to, to that and hope that it won't offend them or be too, too tough on everybody. Um, the kids, they don't really, they don't, of course they don't get it, they don't care, but, um, uh, they did come and hear me sing for the first time as the th a threesome this summer, and I think it was good for them to see me singing. And and I, I'm always jumping around the house. My father plays, and I sing, and so and they sing and dance. But they really saw me do it. So I think as much as it doesn't matter, I think they're proud. I think they enjoy it. My daughter Victoria, um, w the twins were newborn when I did White Christmas, so they didn't come to see White Christmas. Um, but Victoria was like three. Um, she probably just turned three because they were eight months old. And um, uh, I bought a Barbie dream house and I put it in my, in my dressing room to try to make it seem appealing <laughs> that I have to go to work. And uh, so she had a Barbie dream house and she would hang out with me between, um, between acts or between shows and we'd have takeout dinner together. And she would then go and get scared every night of the audience, scared to see all those people. It was a big theater. 
So she went in the lobby with my husband and she would watch um, from the screen, the little TV screen by the, uh, where they sell like coffee cups and t-shirts. She couldn't look. Um, I think she looked, I do know she looked the last scene of the last night. My husband has been incredible for my whole career and I actually met my husband when I was five years old. So I feel like he's been with me my whole life. Um, but uh, Patrick loves this record. He has believed in this record from the very beginning. This record has taken a while and with the kids and with my hormones and with all the chaos and the noise and the not sleeping and I don't know if I'm going to be able to sing because I'm so tired and all the planning and all this. I'm going to start sounding like a nutcase, but this is the truth. Um, he just is a very steady person. He's very calm and he believes in getting from here to there. He just believes I can get from here to there. There's no story about Ghostlight Records, except I'm just thrilled to be there. I'm thrilled to be with them again. They did the Amorecast album. I love Kurt. I trust him. I trust his team. They have a great vision. Um, I love what they stand for. I love their energy. And um, I did not shop the album. I wanted them to have it, and I wanted, um, I wanted it in their hands, and they love it. Um, and I love them for that. It's, uh, I'm very proud to be a part of their team. Look, what can I say? I, I've come through a big journey to become a mother. I have these great, beautiful three little girls. They're like the three graces. This terrific, sweet husband. And this beautiful, beautiful album. I mean, we are, uh, as a team, as a family, we are so happy and, and healthy and grateful. And um, so, as just as a person, as a singer, I am just, I'm beyond blessed. And uh, uh, I really, um, I just say, it's like a prayer. It's actually, I feel very happy and I feel very, very peaceful. I'm very, very centered. I'm aware how tenuous life is. And so um, I just take it, I take it seriously. I take it lightly. I am happy. Of course, I hope everybody loves this record. I hope they feel um, all that we put into it and, um, and that it, it's, uh, it's something for them, you know. What are you doing the rest? of your life north and south and east and west of your life I have only one request of your life that you spend it all with me The seasons and the times of your days All the nickels and the dimes of your days Let the reasons and the rhymes of your days